telling us so much more about uh, all that IDP Media does. Of course, you're more than welcome to meet and interact with our team. Uh, we'll be more than happy to connect with you. But really, to take forward what he mentioned, how is it that tech can help the urban rail system? How is it that we can become the very best in the world? This platform is going to discuss all that and a lot more. And we are privileged to have amongst us our guest of honor today, who all of us are really looking forward to hearing from. He'll be telling us so much more when it comes to Indian Metro Rail, the plans, the performance, the future strategies. And I'd like to request all of you to please use this platform to interact with them. I'm sure after uh, he's through with his session, he'll be more than happy to take maybe a couple of questions from all of you. So please feel free to engage. But to tell you more about him, may I please extend a very warm welcome uh, to Ms. Jayashree Mendes, editor at Construction Week. A round of applause as she steps forward and introduces our absolutely fantastic guest of honor. Jayashree, we would like to welcome Mr. Avnish Awasthi, Chief Advisor to Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, who will speak on Indian Metro Rail plans, performance, and future strategies. Avnish Kumar Awasthi, Advisor to Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, was CEO of Uttar Pradesh Expressways Industrial Development Authority, UPADA. The bureaucrat has been working diligently with government projects and companies and has a reputation for being fair, upright, and honest. He received his B.Tech degree in Electrical Engineering in 1985 from IIT Kanpur. After his graduation, he passed his Civil Services Examination in 1987 and became an IAS officer. Welcome here, Mr. Mr. Avasti. Good morning, Mr. Indrajit Ji, Ashtosh Shukla Ji, and our recently found friends here today. I have been asked here to give some inputs, maybe share some views, put some ideas on metro rail and projects for the current and for the future. Well, I'm an engineer by profession and of course for the last five years I've worked in the area of infrastructure and expressways and we in the state of Uttar Pradesh have done about 80,000 crores of expressways on time. And project management is what is the challenge which we have faced under the leadership of Yogi Adityanath Ji. We did the Purvanchal Expressway, a project of about 22,000 crores. And you would have seen some of the visuals where the Honorable Prime Minister landed through a cargo airplane on an airfield in Sultanpur. And this project, despite COVID, the two waves of COVID, we could manage to do the project on time. And the construction was done by all our partners within time, without any time extension. And that was the challenge before us. The challenge was further helped by me because I was the Home Secretary also at that point of time. And COVID involves management of labor, management of material and resources, and movement of labor and resources during the COVID period with the COVID protocol. And that was the challenge for us. And we did manage it well so that we could keep our entire workforce COVID free so that there were absolutely no problems on the ground. And we could do the Purvanchal Expressway where the Prime Minister landed on an Air Force transport plane on the, on, the, on the expressway and we went forward. We then further did another expressway, the Bundelkhand Expressway, another project of about 15, 16,000 crores, again on time, before time rather, four months before time. And this project again was done, the, uh, the, the foundation stone was laid by the Honorable Prime Minister and the, uh, the inauguration was done again by him. And of course, we did it four months before time, 36 months was the time period, and we did it in about 28, 29 months. Of course, when you make such large projects, there are always some problems. We did further a project of 45,000 crores on BOT, where the Ganga Expressway between Meerut and uh, Prayagraj, which is Allahabad, is already underway, two big 
contractors IRB and Adani's have taken up the project and this project is again on board and the, and the appointed dates would be given within this week. In fact, one of the appointed dates is being given today and very soon the other appointed date would be given to the second contractor. So these large projects are on board. So my point to all project managements of large infrastructure projects, including Metro, is to manage the movement of material, of course, and the manage the movement of labor. What we did in the course of this entire COVID campaign was the large number of labor, 40,000 labor, returned from Maharashtra, Gujarat, and other places from all over India. We got them all digitized and painters, welders, all sorts of carpenters were all digitized and they were all approached through their mobile numbers so that all our private companies could bring them all these together and get them on board. And this is the challenge before most of us. If private companies are able to build a resource base of manpower which can further take them forward, this is what the challenge is. Get those people trained and take them forward. I have found that most private companies, when they handle big projects, they subcontract their labor con uh, part to smaller companies, they further subcontract it to further smaller companies, and the people who come on the ground to do the actual part of work on the ground, they are the ones who are not trained, or they are the ones, Diwali ho gai, char din chutti, Holi ho gai, chhe din chutti, Kuch ho gaya, Vishikarma puja ho gaya, chhe din chutti. And my view as a person who has handled large-scale big projects is that unless and until you are able to manage your labor force on the ground, which is handling the project, which is the crux of the problem, unless you are able to manage them well, you cannot and will not be able to take up large projects. So this is my first point of view that you need to digitize the database available of all the manpower and workforce with you to take it forward. That's one. The second issue which I find and I would like to put forth before you is the second line of engineering manpower which is available with us is also tends to move very fast. I have seen with the big private companies which are working on the ground, I went around on all these projects and I used to monitor my projects directly with the engineers on the ground of the private companies. And they would tell me that if UPTA gives them a certificate that they have worked on my project for two years, they would get twice the salary in a project in Maharashtra. And they would then suddenly tend to move. So the second line of engineers that we have, the second line of engineering manpower that we have is another which we need to work upon to retain on our big projects. And this is another other challenge that we faced on the ground. And I would say that there are any number of industry captains here for metro rail projects. You will need to build a manpower base for the second line of engineering manpower, the young manpower, which you will take, have to take from the new institutions that are there and train them to take them forward. And this is, these are the two challenges which I feel where digitization, where the training, your career management of the labor force, of the technical force is one of the most important thing that will be required to be taken up. Material management is another area where a large number of things need to be worked upon. And material management, particularly bulk purchase of materials, in an environment where steel prices are going up, quality steel at times is not available, quality cement at times is not available, unless and until you have long-term standing with large companies, it is obviously a challenge. And if material is not available on a long-term basis, this again is an issue. But I have found that material management, if you have good people on your back office, that of course is something which one can take forward. As regards UP, Metro, you all know, we have the Lucknow Metro, which is already operational. I was there on the day when uh, the UP Metro was launched. I was part of that, uh, that uh, program. 
I was also there when the Kanpur Metro was launched to, uh, very recently by the Honorable Prime Minister. I was not there when the Agra Metro got uh, the foundation stone was laid by the Honorable Prime Minister. I have been involved to an extent uh, in the discussions on the Gorakhpur Metro as well as the Varanasi Light Metro. But I have been directly involved with UPIDA and rights for the semi-high speed network which has to come up along the expressways. This is another area where I feel that along expressways the right of way provides about 30 to 40 meters of the right of way is available for semi-high speed train, trains to come up. And this uh, uh, right of way is available for free for maybe an arrangement which can come forth. So there was a plan, there is a plan to build a rail network between Delhi to Varanasi, the Honorable Prime Minister's constituency, uh, right along the expressways. And this is another area where we could think of bringing some of these uh, extended uh, rail networks which could be obviously of, uh, uh, of use in the future. I have to an extent been involved with the uh, Delhi Merit uh, RRTS also, and I have been involved with the security systems for the metros, because as Home Secretary, that is also one of the challenges for which most metro networks don't build or don't envisage how security is going to be provided for the uh, metro networks, because they feel that, well, it's the job of the government to provide security, so, well, it will be paid for. We have built in the state of Uttar Pradesh, a special security force for, uh, for providing security in the metro railways, and this has already started. Five battalions are being raised. So this is another aspect where I would, of course, like to just make a passing remark that security within the metros in the coming uh, future is going to be a challenge. I have, obviously, a lot of input to give on infrastructure and infrastructure management. Indrajit ji wanted me to come here today. I have to rush back to Lucknow, but I'm, I will be very happy to provide any backup for any of the companies which are here to take up infrastructure projects within the metro se sector or maybe within any other sector uh, uh, within the state of Uttar Pradesh. I'd like to invite any one of you to be in touch with uh, me or through him or through Construction Week. I can also like to, I would also like to put before you that our Honorable Chief Minister has put this target of a one trillion dollar economy. We are only at 0.25 trillion right now. So obviously a large, unless and until we have a large infrastructure and that includes the urban infrastructure which obviously means urban transportation. It is going to be a challenge for us to build and that challenge can only be met through the, uh, the urban infrastructure that comes up. Uh, urban infrastructure obviously requires a lot of financing. Uh, financing is another area which I would like to just make another passing remark. We in the expressways have done a lot of work on financing. We have to, uh, to date in expressways been able to finance our uh, expressways to the level of about 29,000 crores through the commercial banks itself. And our uh, interest rates have been hardly at around uh, six months MCLR, which, is, which was earlier sub-7%. So we, at this point of time, have an interest rate of about 7, 7.1% only. So that's another area where a lot of work or a lot of innovative work can also happen. But obviously with the problems of the currency. International finance is going to be somewhat costly because of hedging. So that is a problem that we definitely face. So I always keep saying that we should go for financing within the country and our commercial banks, the nationalized banks have sufficient liquidity to provide us if our projects are bankable. So once again, I would like to say that the first part, which first thing that I would like to emphasize for all big companies which are, have to do long-term work 
is to work in the area of their labor force, is to work in the area of their technology persons, if, uh, which means their engineers, unless and until I have seen big companies, big, I wouldn't like to name them, big companies who have failed on their projects just because they did not have the proper labor on the ground and they depended on certain subcontractors which failed them miserably. And secondly, I would like to also further state that material and material management in the area where prices keep fluctuating is also another area where we would like to see a lot of work to happen. I would also like to state that Metro should look up uh, projects along uh, expressways so that you could have free land available for making new projects so that land is not an issue and it would bring down the cost of projects uh, for the new Metro or the intercity projects could be possible along the roads. So that is also an area where a lot of work can happen. And I would also like to further state that financing is of metros is going to be a challenge in the future. Metros cost a lot of money. I have been involved uh, with the Agra Metro where uh, a large number of uh, regulatory clearances, particularly from the, um, uh, from the uh, ASI and others is also a challenge. So those issues are also there, but of course, uh, if we work hard, we can reach the solution. Today, I would like to finally tell you that I was traveling with my uh, chief minister only about four days ago, and we went to Prayagraj, and I told him that it's quite possible that rather than building bridges over the Yamuna, we build something like a tunnel under the Yamuna, like what the metro does, and that is also going to, uh, is a possibility. So there is a lot of uh, possibility of building tunnels under rivers so that uh, a kumbh-like uh, arrangement can be catered for. So all of these things are what I would like and bring forth before you. I'd like to once again thank Indrajit ji for uh, nudging me to come over here. And thank you once again to Construction Week. Thank you once again to all the sponsors here. And I'm sure we will continue to be part of Construction Week and I'll continue to be part of you. Thank you. It's very heartening to note that uh, projects, road projects are getting completed before time in a country where we are used to just delays. But still I have a question, sir, here. Do we have any benchmark with the world standards, world standards? Because if we are comparing ourselves with our past performance, obviously we are doing better. But if we are, is there any benchmark with world standards? See, with, uh, that is what my question. We in India have one of the best technical persons available with us. World standards for anything are always available with us. These, uh, these standards for expressways, I know of them personally. They are quite achievable. The only problem is that if you have to do the world standards right from planning, the first part of execution, all along the execution, then finally the testing, it has to be all done properly. For an expressway, I can just tell you, there, there is what is called a safety audit. A world standard means the road has to be safety audited before you launch it. Now that is being done, uh, the Ministry of Road Transport has now evolved these standards. So obviously in Metro again, uh, most of these things are getting standardized. So it is quite possible. The only issue is that whether you actually implement it or not. Most of the uh, verification is done by third party. If you have a good uh, third party verification done, I'm, I mean, I can tell you, if, uh, I can name it, a company like Rights. We had an arm's length uh, rights evaluation of all the things and it was quite possible. But the point is whether you want it or not. The question is, it depends on you. The customer, whether it wants world standard or not. If the customer wants it, it's quite possible in India. We have all the uh, knowledge base that is required to get world standard. It's absolutely quite possible. But as regards the construction on the ground, large companies do have the wherewithal to do it. But when they sublet to smaller companies, that's where the problem lies. That's where you, you have certain problems in quality. And I have known biddings now, what is happening is, when you have cutthroat bidding and you bid much below par, that is where you start cutting corners. That's where we, we will have problems in the future. 
there are any number of companies which are bidding below par and that is where you will have a problem and uh, that is that is an issue everyone wants uh, uh, to have a slice of the cake and they bid low and if you bid below par then obviously you will have a problem thank, thank you. you so very much uh, mr avasti uh, well sir actually has to head out which is why uh, that's the only question that we could entertain at the moment but like i mean i'm i'm giving you a number yeah uh the delhi uh, sorry not the delhi lucknow uh, kanpur expressway is being has been bidded out to a company i know very well which has done work for us and they have bidded at minus 22% i asked the owner how are you going to do this job and they had no answer so this is this will probably be true of metro also so you are going to bid minus 10% and how are you going to do a job for minus 10% the industry and all the industry captains have to take a call and this is the challenge and all of you would like an order book which is large so that is going to be and if you are standardized everyone will be qualified if you have 10 qualified bidders then that's an issue thank you sir